right. Well, uh, thanks a lot for this invitation. I'm happy to see, um, happy to be here. So uh, the title and abstract were, um, I, I think that belongs to Damien, um, just FY, FYI. So um, everything I talk about today will be joint work with John Francis, and parts will be joint with Nick Rosenblum and Aaron Maislegi. So my goal for this talk is to, to uh, talk about this, I'll, I'll call it theorem. Uh, it's, we're not quite finished with the proof. It's been a long time. Uh, so is to, to talk about this, um, how it's related to other things you might know, and indicate some of the, the aspects of, of its proof. And please speak up. I'm happy to, to tailor the, the talk to your interests. So uh, this, uh, this result says, that, says the following. Factorization homology with adjoints. That's, that's a term which will be described in a bit. <coughs> Defines a fully faithful functor from an infinity category of pointed infinity n categories with adjoints to space valued functors on a category of solidly framed stratified spaces. Now that's, that's a lot of, of jargon. Um, and again, much of the talk will be uh, unpacking some of that jargon. And uh, it's not any old functor. It's one that has the following values. So if you take a pointed n category, the value on a, hemis uh, on a, a closed k-dimensional disk will be the space of k-morphisms in, in the n category. And the value on rk will be the space of k-endomorphisms of the distinguished object. <coughs> so here, uh, the white part is repeating what I said in words. And I will indicate um, some parts of the right-hand side before actually defining it more thoroughly. So again, uh, the domain of this functor is an infinity category of infinity n categories with adjoints. Uh, if you're wondering what is meant by saying with adjoints, that's to say this. Each k-morphism in it has both a left and a right adjoint for k between 0 and n. And uh, again, the right-hand side, the codomain of this, is space-valued functors on, on a, some very peculiar category of solidly n-framed stratified spaces. So let me, before saying, giving a, a specific definition of that, let me indicate what an object is. <coughs> so an, an object in that MFD category is a stratified space. Uh, strictly speaking, it's what we call conically smooth. That's just a type of regularity that ensures that every stratum is a smooth manifold. And furthermore, the links between two strata have some regularity to them. Think of Whitney stratified space. So an object is a stratified space, but not just a stratified space alone. It's solidly n-framed. And what's meant by that is that uh, it's equipped with an injection of its tangent constructible bundle into the trivial rank n bundle. So an example of an object, then, is just a smooth n manifold equipped with a parallelization. Another example of an object is, for instance, a point <coughs> equipped with uh, the unique um, injection of its tangent bundle, which is the zero vector bundle, to the trivial bundle. Um, <coughs> so that's, uh, uh, in, in just a moment, I'll compare this result to other things you might be familiar with. I'll say right off the bat that um, one of the reasons for that conjecture altogether is that essentially an immediate corollary is a proof of the Tangle hypothesis as well as the cobordism hypothesis. 
to see the logic for how that assertion implies this is, uh, is posted on the archive. Um, there's a related conjecture to that one. It's like the k-linear version of that one. I'll just, uh, I, I think I'll let you read this. What's that? Is, is every stratified space has an injection? A tangent space Px2, are uh, It's equipped with an injection. Uh, so, so the it data, what's that? It may not happen always. That's right. Yeah, and, uh, thank you. So in fact, if the stratified space has dimension greater than n, then there is no such injection. So, so this structure of there being an injection uh, requires the ambient dimension of the stratified space to be no bigger than n. That's, yeah, that's right. <coughs> so there's a k-linear version of that which uh, we haven't given substantial thought to, but expect for it to be true. So I'll just state it as a conjecture. Uh, this conjecture is proved um, in dimension one in uh, joint work with those, those, all those names up there. And I'll just leave this here for you to read as you wish. So, <coughs> I'll now try to connect this result to other things you might know. And I'll do it in, uh, in three passes. First, I'll talk about factorization homology in a maybe a more familiar guise. And then I'll talk about uh, other uh, manifold invariants that are captured by this. So, remark. This, meaning that, extends factorization homology of EN algebras. <coughs> uh, in the following sense. So, uh, EN algebras count as examples of n categories with adjoints, in fact, pointed ones. Namely, given an EN algebra, uh, you can construct an n category from it that has a unique object, a unique one morphism, et cetera, a unique n minus one morphism, and then that EN algebra worth of n morphisms. That construction is a d-loop construction n times so Bn, this is in fact fully faithful. <coughs> then there's the functor of the result to uh, co appreciates on this category of solidly framed stratified space. And the sense in which uh, this factorization homology is compatible with the one already that you might be familiar with for EN algebras is that if you take an EN algebra, its value <coughs> on at least if you evaluate on not any old stratified space, but a stratified space that's just a stratification of a smooth N manifold, Smooth means conical smooth. Yeah. Smooth manifold. No, but here it is. The condition is conical smooth. Uh, if you add join this. That, yeah, that's that's right. Um, so a general object of M, uh, MFD, is a conically smooth stratified space together with this tangential structure. Uh, but here I'm just saying uh, to say a sense in which uh, this new factorization homology extends the one you might already know for EN algebras. I'm just saying what its values are on stratifications of a smooth n-manifold, like a triangulation of an n-manifold or something. I'm not in 
in this description saying what it, how it evaluates on a general <coughs> uh, stratified space. So here I actually mean stratification of a smooth n-manifold. Vistribilized bundle. Yes, a s thank you. A smooth frame parallelized in manifold. And the answer is just delete all of the positive codimensional strata. The result is a smooth n manifold. And evaluate a uh, factorization homology, maybe call it alpha for the just the en version. So, so this extends the factorization homology for en algebras that you might already be aware of. Let me just uh, speak to this in case you're not aware of this factorization homology alpha. Um, and the, the, what I want to emphasize uh, in the next comment is that <coughs> uh, this version of factorization homology for EN algebras uh, I think of as uh, codifying the observables of a perturbative uh, topological QFT. Um, and the intention behind this actually really the k-linear version uh, abstracts the observables of a not necessarily perturbative T QFT. So let me say, uh, give a comment that reflects um, that sense in which this is abstracting a observables of a perturbative QFT. And this is inspired by work of those books. <coughs> So, uh, for example, if you so fix uh, a field, let's just say characteristic zero, and a point in a uh, derived K scheme. <coughs> then uh, there's a couple things you can do with this. First off, you can construct a formal scheme by just taking the completion of this scheme at that point. So this constructs a formal scheme, denote it like that. And it also constructs <coughs> a uh, Lie algebra, namely the tangent complex at that point. So this is a Lie algebra. And uh, these uh, Kazool duality articulates a sense in which these two objects determine each other. <coughs> uh, given a Lie algebra, there's a formal construction. Uh, this is present in a paper of uh, Ben Knudsen that constructs, I'll put an E N on the top of that, there's a EN tangent complex version of this, which is an EN universal enveloping algebra of that Lie algebra. The result is, uh, this is an EN algebra. And therefore, it defines the input uh, to this composite construction. So I'm going to say what this is when that's closed, parallelized. And the result here is some K module. <coughs> and this is, uh, if you're wondering uh, what this K module is, it's, um, well, it's the functions on maps from the manifold into this formal completion. <coughs> so, uh, is there a reverse number n? Uh, number n on the right? Yeah. Yeah, th that's, that's the feature. It's not, well, not n dimension that's the dimension of the manifold. <coughs> So uh, the, the functions so on this, the observables of this, uh, so, uh, well, anyway, 
here. What is m? m is smooth over complex numbers and or over this k. Um, m is a closed parallelized smooth n manifold. Over smooth c infinity. C, c infinity n manifold. And it, maybe you're asking that to know what is the meaning of this, because the... The field, you specified k right. with the characteristic p, yeah. and m is over characteristic 0. I'm sorry. For, uh, um, right, in this step, in that, the way that I use Kazool duality, I don't know it without the characteristic 0 assumption. Um, I forgot I uh, indicated what some morphisms in this are. I'll just leave that there, though I won't. I'll, I'll come back to it later. Um, as another remark, I'll indicate another value of uh, factorization homology. Um, so up there, that previous remark said that it agrees with um, factorization homology for EN algebras. Um, and for this remark, uh, this is the intention behind this is to indicate that uh, this version of factorization homology uh, potentially captures something non-perturbative. So suppose you're given a sequence of maps of spaces. So I'll just call that Z bullet maps between spaces. Like homotopy types. So from this, we can construct a couple things. One is C sub Z bullet. This is an N category with adjoints. Let me say what, I'll describe it just by describing what the space of k-morphisms is. Um, with k-morphisms, with a k-morphism. <coughs> well, it's a map from, uh, this flag of spaces to that flag of spaces, where what's, what's the domain here? It's the uh, flag of spaces uh, given by the various skeleta of the closed end disk uh, regarded, say, as a CW complex via the hemispherical stratification. So the hemispherical um, CW structure on the closed end desk. <coughs> so in other words, uh, a zero morphism or an object is simply a point in Z0. A one morphism um, is a pair of points in Z0 together with a path between them, between their images in Z1, <coughs> etc. <coughs> And this organizes nicely into uh, an n category. So the, the statement is that for m a closed uh, parallelized uh, smooth n manifold, this construction applied to uh, to this n category, that space is familiar, it's a mapping space, just into the last term. <coughs> so this is a, uh, non a version, an enhancement of non-abelian Poincaré duality. <coughs> um, oh, I should have said, uh, there's always a map, and it's an equivalence provided uh, the map from zi to zj for each i less than or equal to j is, is i connected. So here, uh, the, the right hand side is a mapping space. The left hand side, as I hope we'll see, is some version of like a state sum. And this is the pattern we expect in general is that this factorization homology 
and actually most interesting is the enriched version, um, is, is a, a way of giving state sum models to uh, observables for uh, non-perturbative sigma models. So uh, the next thing I'd like to, to talk about is uh, how, uh, how that result is related to three possibly uh, also familiar constructions of TQFTs. And uh, I'll just reiterate that my goal here is to, um, is to see how to use this result to capture stuff that's familiar to, to you, possibly. Uh, and also extends um, your imagination to what, what else might be capturable. So there's three types of manifold invariants that are easily captured by, um, by that, that result. So there's the I'll call the first one the Jones type because this captures uh, a version of the Jones polynomial. So take a non-empty manifold and smooth manifold. What's that? Manifold and smooth manifold. Um, yeah. So I will always by manifold. Let's just say I'll mean smooth manifold for this talk. So uh, this will produce essentially link invariants, but I'll, I'll phrase it uh, quite generally. So say you have any non-empty closed uh, uh, manifold equipped with an embedding of it into Euclidean space of co-dimension k. Um, <coughs> together with a trivialization of its Gauss map. By trivialization, I mean a null homotopy of its Gauss map. So I'll take that as the, the input to the, this next invariant. Um, in the case where w is a circle and n is 3, um, then this is, of course, just a knot. And a trivialization of a Gauss map, in that case, is an orientation to, to the knot as well as a normal framing. That's it. It's the, it's the same data. So now let this be a pointed um, n category with adjoints. You can pair this pointed n category with that uh, higher dimensional knot to get the following. a map from k endomorphisms in this, uh, of that distinguished object to n endomorphisms of that distinguished object as follows. So there's uh, this essential calculation recognizes this as the factorization homology on Rk of C. <coughs> um, the morphisms that actually I'm glad that I wrote, um, I did not indicate what morphisms in this manifold category are. And uh, it, the morphisms in it are designed exactly so that you could do the following maneuvers that I'll do in this Jones type as well as the next two types. And one of those maneuvers is I want morphisms in this manifold category in particular to be opposites of surjective fiber bundles. So <coughs> here's a surjective fiber bundle. Using that W is non-empty, so the just projection from W cross RK to RK is certainly a, a surjective fiber bundle from that to that. And I'm just asserting, I'm just telling you 
that that defines a morphism the other way in this manifold category. <coughs> and therefore, a map this way between these spaces, which are the values of factorization homology. I'm also just telling you that uh, another example of a morphism in this category of manifolds is an open embedding. Using that, um, that this map is uh, equipped with a trivialization of its Gauss map, it extends as an open embedding from Rk cross W into Rn. So this is induced by the link together with its framing. And then the calculation up there identifies those as well. So <coughs> uh, that's what this composite map is. And I call it the Jones type because in this example, it literally is the Jones polynomial. So uh, if you take n to be 3, w to be the circle uh, with, um, a tr a tr with a normal framing and orientation to the associated link, uh, and C to be the twofold D loop of the category of finite dimensional representations of quantum SL2. <coughs> so, uh, a result of Drinfeld gives that this category of such representations is a braided monoidal category. Therefore, it can be twice D looped just to be regarded as a. Uh, two category, in fact, that it will be a pointed two category. And the fact that I'm looking at finite dimensional representations guarantees that every object in this, in this category has a, a dual. Um, and that manifests then as this then pointed three category having adjoints. So we can input all that and in that case, this arrow is simply a map from the space of objects <coughs> of this to uh, the space of endomorphisms of the unit which maps to, at the very least, the ground ring. And this is the colored Jones polynomial. <coughs> That's why I call it the Jones type. Is that gone forever? No, no, no. Ah. Say something about when n is good four, w is good to s three. I can't say anything useful. Yeah, that would be um, if you. I would be keen on anything anybody has to say about that. But but that is the point: is that uh, these constructions are defined in all dimensions. I mean, finding examples of four categories is not an easy task. Was there? Yeah. There is a restriction on the co-dimension k over n. And so yeah, sure. It can be co yes. Yeah, when it's written, it's not restrictions. It's not right, that's right, yeah. No, that means, you know, I asked the question because of the not. It, it should be co yeah, Because it's written k n, yeah, it's nothing it's written on the So there's another type. I'll call it the triavero type. Um, and that's uh, as follows. So take the pointed n category to be input <coughs> to be um, <coughs> now this this requires some explanation. So uh, so just an aside, a quick note on some formal category theory is so from when n is equal to 1 
I'll say, or I hope um, this has meaning to you. It's the full subcategory of all K modules, just consisting, those, cons consisting of those generated from K by finite co-limits, and then by retracts thereof. So uh, this is perfect K modules. Um, <coughs> it has a natural uh, symmetric monoidal structure, just given by tensoring two together. Um, as so, uh, you can look at <coughs> you can look at the full subcategory of categories equipped with <laughs> a, a, uh, an action of that symmetric monoidal category. And then you can look at those generated from this itself under, again, finite colimits and retracts, et cetera. And that, again, has a symmetric bundle structure, so this can be repeated, uh, there, thereby defining perf nk inductively um, as the uh, smallest full subcategory of modules for that symmetric monoidal uh, n minus 1 category, um, which are generated from it by finite colimits and retracts. Now, th I, I don't, uh, it is an interesting problem to try to make explicit what objects in perf n is for each n, uh, but that is a separate um, and interesting uh, uh, thing to. to to work out. Um, nevertheless, this has a, a fine definition. And so I'm not suggesting that you should easily know what an object of it is, but just know that this exists in order for me to proceed. <coughs> so if we use the enriched version of factorization homology now, this is the uh, for this next type of manifold invariance. Well, factorization homology of the, the, categ the K linear category that's as trivial as possible, it's point, 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 and then at the very top is just K, um, is just K, certainly. Um, and the, uh, this point in there, so this is determined by, uh, by uh, X can be selected out by a morphism from this very simple, this is the role of point. Uh, so a map from this into perf NK selects out that curly X. <coughs> and a Merida invariance Um, in this enriched case, identifies this with K itself. And here, in case, because well, I didn't say this is a closed, parallelized N manifold. Uh, the composite number then is, is an element of K or a number. If you're wondering, why you might expect this Merida invariance. Well, there is uh, a key example, and the proof of this is the same premised on a type of excision for this, for that, that thing. <coughs> and uh, so I'll just mention that in the case of dimension one, um, this is nothing other than the Hochschild homology of this K-linear category. And by a trace map, for instance, that implements an equivalence between that and K. And uh, well, this is a conjecture, but uh, we expect for that uh, Merida invariance to still be true as implemented by a higher version of a trace. So premised on that, this defines a manifold invariance. Uh, for uh, given um, an object in perf n. 
I call it Taraya Vero type because <coughs> when n is equal to 3 and x is, um, so an object of perf 3 is a certain example of, with some finiteness conditions, a k linear 2 category. And if you take it to be the d loop of R, where R is a, <coughs> a fusion category, so a, a monoidal category, a, a monoidal <laughs> k-linear category uh, with duals, um, which is semi-simple and has finitely many simple objects. So in addition to having R having duals, to be in perf in that particular case amounts to R being uh, semi-simple and having finitely many simple objects, as well as a condition about the endomorphisms of its unit. So in that case, uh, in that case, this is the the tri of zero invariant. <coughs> and the third type is the and this. Um, so the, the tri Vero type is premised on some features of this conjecture. I'll just make that clear. But those are features that, if anything is true, uh, then, um, then, then those should be true. Uh, this one I have less confidence about, so I'm mentioning it to, to more just spark your imagination. Um, is <coughs> so if C is just formally equipped with a certain trace map or an action, <clears throat> again, M is closed. Then uh, the partition function with respect to that trace determines another manifold invariance. Um, and I'll just give the, uh, an example. So if C is finite dimensional, is the twofold D loop of finite dimensional representations um, over C of the unrolled quantum group for SL2 at an even root of unity, then uh, this uh, notoriously is not a fusion category. Uh, however, it has this ideal that's often called proj of C inside of this braided monoidal category. I'll just put rep of it. <coughs> uh, and that ideal determines such an action. And um, in this way, one gets manifold invariance uh, along the lines of those constructed by uh, Nathan Greer in particular. OK, so uh, that concludes a discussion of how factorization homology is related to other things you might know. Uh, what's next is I'd like to describe um, what the values of this construction are. Um, I'll, I'll do it first heuristically, and then um, and then I'll, I'll give more details. So, are there any comments or questions? I have a question about the, these three invariant types. Yeah. How, how does one go about showing that these are, in fact, the invariants you already knew? That's a great question. So that's, with, uh, yeah, with all of them, it's premised on a type of excision for factorization homology. Um, if that means something to you, that's great. Uh, 
but so speak up if, if you want me to elaborate <coughs> on that. I'll make some choices on whether or not I, I do. A question? Yes. Uh, Donaldson written invariants, do they relate to this formalism? I don't know. That would be interesting to know. I, I'll bet people in this room have better ideas than I, than I would generate. <coughs> So let me indicate now the heuristic for what the values of this are. And uh, as I do this, I, I, want, I, I neglected to emphasize a point, which is that um, somehow I, I feel like <laughs> um, saying it this way is like what is being emphasized is that this is fully faithful. But um, even before that, it's just to emphasize that it's even just a functor. <laughs> Like that it even exists, it's defined, that there's a way of constructing um, invariance of manifolds from an n category at all, fully faithful or not. For indeed, the results are not just a way of assigning some value to every manifold given an n category, but that value has an action of the topological group of diffeomorphisms of the manifold. It's completely coherent and co continuous more than just being fully faithful, or in, let alone being fully faithful. So the very heuristic is, is, is the following. So again, let's just for discussion's sake take M to be a, um, a closed smooth n-manifold, and C is a, a pointed n-category. So this is, a, informally, this is a moduli space of C labeled disk stratifications. Of M. So in other words, an element of this is like a triangulation, for example, a triangulation of M uh, together with a way of labeling every k-dimensional face by a k-morphism in C. <coughs> but not any random way of making such assignments, but in such a way that uh, for instance, if k is 1, so uh, we're looking at a, an edge in this triangulation, uh, that edge uh, inherits is sent nearly a direction from the ambient parallelization of M. Uh, it doesn't literally, but you could always tilt that edge as needed uh, so that uh, that edge aligns um, with the first direction of the ambient parallelization, and then that edge inherits an orientation and with respect to that orientation, uh, the labeling of uh, the two endpoints of that edge should agree with the source and target of the labeling uh, of, that, of that edge. To know that that, uh, that description makes it seem like there was a choice involved with how I possibly had to tilt that edge, and indeed that is a choice. But that choice is in the wash exactly because I'm assuming the end category has adjoints. So that's a very heuristic, um, a little less heuristic. I'm saying this to lead to the construction itself, of course. Um, so let's see. Given a manifold, we can construct a space from it. I'll call it D of M. So this is a moduli space of disk stratifications of M. So it's like a moduli space of all triangulations of M. Um, also, from C, we can construct, I'll call it F sub C, a co-sheaf on D of M. <coughs> and what is this co-sheaf? Well, with stock, 
at a point in here, so a disk stratification, D of M, think up, uh, on a triangulation of M, is the space of, of C labelings of D, as described in the heuristic above. So uh, with these ways of speaking, then we can take factorization homology. We could define it to be the Cauchy homology of F sub C. So that, that's an idea, and it's an idea toward a definition of factorization homology. And I'll just emphasize two constructions that are starting to appear then from this way of talking. One is Cauchy homology. Uh, that's a colimit construction. Another is the association of this uh, Cauchy <coughs> from C. And this is, it's, it's like a maneuver where you know what to evaluate on every disk. Now we're evaluating, we're finding a way to evaluate on a disk stratification of a manifold. So this is like uh, the result of extending from a basis. So this is a limit construction. This is shedding light on what will become the actual definition of factorization homology. Okay, so now, <coughs> better still, so uh, up there, that, that first squiggly arrow, D of M, that moduli space of disk stratifications, a moment's thought in dimensions more than one, recognizes that moduli space as being really crazy infinite dimensional. Like the space of triang the moduli space of triangulations of a surface is definitely going to be wildly infinite dimensional because you could wiggle an, an edge around and stuff. So I don't care to actually say what that moduli space is because whatever I would mean by it in the end, this co-sheaf on it <coughs> will, uh, will not be a general co-sheaf it'll be constructible. So specifically, um, there's a sense in which that moduli space of disk stratifications is stratified. Two disk strati so two triangulations belong to the same stratum if, there's, if they're isotopic to each other. And as so, just that way, that heuristic description of F sub C is such that uh, the values of that a co-sheaf depend continuously through such isotopies. So instead of concerning myself with defining that moduli space and then constructing a co-sheaf on it, I'll recognize that moduli space, once I would have defined it, it has a stratification to it. And then this co-sheaf would be constructible with respect to that stratification. And there's a classification of constructible sheaves on stratified spaces. It's namely, it's functors from the exit path category. So I'm not even going to define that moduli space. I'll just define uh, its exit path category. I'm, and I'm only going to be interested in that <coughs> so that I could then hopefully organize the data of an infinity n category to construct a functor from, from it into spaces. And then define 
this to be the co-limit of that functor. So the intention with me to talking in this way was to make it um, seem more plausible to even implement this construction through standard categorical constructions. So in the remainder of the time, I'm going to indicate what this infinity category is. Any comments or questions? <coughs> so definition. Um, so MFD and SFR is an infinity category. with um, an object, or for which an object is. <coughs> uh, I set it over there. It, it's a, a stratified space, x, together with an injection of its tangent constructive bundle into a trivial rank n bundle. A morphism is, so I hope, good, I left it. <coughs> Whatever I'm about to say a morphism is, and, and almost all of the uh, sort of craftsmanship in designing this category is so that all those become examples of morphisms. So I'm going to say what a morphism is, and then I'll, I'll say how those give examples. A morphism is, a constructible, a constructible bundle. I'll say what that is momentarily. Over the one simplex, I said one simplex so that you can start to envision that this is being defined in familiar ways of defining infinity categories as a complete Siegel space. So it's a constructible bundle over this stratified space. It's just an interval with two strata. <coughs> and what does constructible mean? To say constructible bundle, this means uh, the restriction over each stratum. So x restricted to that stratum, and x restricted to, uh, to this stratum. are fiber bundles. Of stratified spaces, of course. <coughs> so the topology in the fibers of this map uh, doesn't change anywhere except as you jump, uh, jump across from that point to the, to the other stratum. Together with, an injection from the fiber-wise tangent constructible bundle into a trivial rank n bundle. And I won't even say, I'm supposed to be defining an infinity category, what's the composition rule? Well, informally, it's given by concatenating two such things along their common boundary. A little more uh, precisely, it's given by constructible bundles over two simplices and simplices in general. But I'll, I'll just leave it at this. <coughs> um, there's two constructions, two examples of such that I'll mention to see how those give examples. So um, if you have x0 to x1, a, uh, a refinement, between stratified spaces uh, onto its image, which is open, then there's a construction you can do from it. Call it the open mapping cylinder, sil O, O for open. And it's defined to be x0 across the closed interval, union 
x1 cross the half open interval over x0 cross the half open interval. And this way of talking evidently gives a canonical map down to the closed interval. And that canonical map <coughs> is uh, a, a constructible bundle. I won't mention the tangential structure that comes along for the ride. And there's another construction of such a morphism. Given a uh, given itself a proper constructible bundle, there's a reverse mapping cylinder construction. That's very similar. And this too is equipped with a natural map to the closed interval, making it a constructible bundle. And there's a fact that this, these two classes of morphisms in this category MFD, or uh, this manifold category, generate all of them. These types of morphisms generate this infinity category, the morphisms in this infinity category. I wanted to indicate some of the technical results in this, and that's one of them. Uh, it amounts to some business about stratified space analysis. And uh, now finally, uh, disk and SFR is the full subcategory consisting of those, so it's the smallest containing these hemispherically stratified K disks, oops, uh, equipped with its, the, the tangential structure given by just drawing them literally in the standard way in Rn and closed under gluing faces together. So then uh, to finish over here, uh, I wanted to say what this infinity category is. And I'll say it now so that you So this is now, this makes available a precise definition of this. And a precise definition is definitely necessary to get anywhere with this. Uh, this is disk sub n SFR. Uh, it's the slice category over m. But not any morphism from an object here to there, but only those that come from that reverse map cil mapping cylinder construction on refinements or sorry, the open mapping cylinder construction on refinements. <coughs> uh, and then just to finish literally in that space, I, I want to indicate um, where the hard parts are because I would like to know that if I saw a talk like this. Uh, one hard part, <coughs> so this is the hard parts. One hard part is matching together essentially the higher categorical uh, uh, adjoints and this tangential data of solid framing. So matching um, higher adjoints and solid framing. And uh, this amounts to uh, 
inductive description of the orthogonal group uh, as it's decomposed um, by the Bruja decomposition. I'll say of GL and of R. I said I would fit it in that little space, but I, I guess I wasn't able to. So the other hard part <coughs> is uh, is in showing that um, it, it sounds silly. This is just technical, but a lot comes down to it. that the evident uh, inclusion is final. Which is to say that co-limits computed by, indexed by this, agree with co-limits computed by this. Um, and the, the, tech, the essential technical stuff behind this, much like the Bruja decomposition comes in there, is existence of common uh, disk refinements, in, even in families. Um, <coughs> so this, I think of this as some version of Whitehead's uh, unique, unique existence and essential uniqueness of PL structures. Um, on uh, a smooth manifold. And <coughs> the, we had to develop some category theory in order to proceed with this. And so I'll just mention there's a paper called Vibrations, or Vibrations of Infinity Categories. That allows even uh, a way of recognizing certain co-limits of higher categories to be accessible. Thank you for your attention. <coughs>
Um, I, I don't know. <laughs>